Hey everybody, it's Scott Tutwiler. It's our Tuesday morning live stream and today we're going to do something a little bit different. I've been talking for a while about doing image uh, critique uh, live on stream and that's what we're going to do today. We have some images and I'm not going to say who they're from, uh, but uh, in order to get your images critiqued, you have to be a um, member of the channel. So you can kind of narrow it down there uh, with the list of people who are supporting the channel. Uh, but if that person wants to say who they are, that's fine. But uh, I'm going to leave it generic. <laughs> uh, but the idea here is that uh, I want you to get stronger image competition, which of course makes you a stronger photographer. Uh, a lot of the things that images are judged for are things that make images more desirable uh, for sales and so on. So if you're good at competition, you will be better at selling images, which means you make more money as a photographer you get better clients and you stay busy. Uh, so now I, I do want to caveat this and that I am not a trained judge. Um, I do judge a lot of image competitions, but as far as the Professional Photographers Association of America or PPA, I am not a trained judge. Um, I, I plan to go through that at some point, but uh, right now I get a lot of judging opportunities around the United States. People fly me to go judge these things or do them virtually. And I win a lot of competitions. And I, I think that's the thing that's important to note is that I do very well in competition with what I have in my head. And my goal here is to share that with you uh, so that you become stronger. Uh, now I do have uh, members mode, members only mode turned on. So if you're a member of the channel, feel free to comment. Um, I do want to keep this kind of a, a higher end you know, service, you know, for you who are supporting this channel. Uh, I had my car stolen recently, so you all are helping me out a lot and getting around and, and my wife and I obviously uh, so really appreciate that so that's going to I want to start to do this a lot more often uh, so if you are a member of this channel go ahead and send me a Dropbox of images and uh, I'll pick some to go through uh, live on stream here uh, so people can learn so even these even though these aren't your images I guarantee you that you're going to leave with uh, oh I didn't know that kind of moments which is the whole goal here you will be a stronger photographer the more of these that you watch uh, so today, uh, actually, PPA just announced their image competition results for the International Print Competition District. Um, and I am the North Central. And uh, looks like I got a couple. So I got top 10 for illustrative and commercial category. And then I also got in the top 10 for general portrait. Now, these are alphabetical. They're not, uh, or they're not alphabetical. Uh, or alphabetical by first name, looks like. Uh, so they're not in order, but you just kind of get grouped in the top 10. So I did very well with the international districts already. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to take time to teach you how to be better at competition entry, which of course, you know, this should apply directly to your photography. So if you have any questions, comments, and so on, feel free to type them as we go. Um, otherwise, if you're watching or recording this later on, feel free to put the comments below. But if you are a supporting member of this channel, that is one of the things that I want you to do is send me images so that I can give you critique because we all want you to get better uh, at photography and image competition in general. Uh, so today we're going to look at these, these images here. I'm going to go through each one. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to tell you that this is my opinion. This is, again, my subjective opinion. If this were my image and I was going to submit it for competition, where would be my areas of concern? What would I be fixing? Would I even put it into photography competitions? and so on. Now, I do want to make the distinction of there is a difference between a merit, uh, which is where you get uh, a win uh, point for your image, and a green merit, which means we get dollars for that image from a client. That is, uh, that's obviously a bigger difference. We are in business to make money, and sometimes those images, uh, so my wife says, if it's a blurry picture of a kid, it's still your kid, that person is going to buy that image, even though it would do horrible a print competition, you're still going to make money. So please keep in mind that this is not judging whether or not it's a good image for a sale. It's judging whether it's going to do well at competition and only that. So don't, don't get overboard with it here. The other thing to keep in mind is that this is my opinion. And you, I, I am um, going to say this. I'm a bit hard edged about things. Um, I don't have uh, any issues being told what I'm doing wrong by somebody who knows what they're doing. And that's the big difference between what I'm offering here. I am saying to you that this is a valid critique because I do know what will do well in an image competition. I will give you a valid critique, but don't take it the same thing as someone's opinion. An opinion, everyone has an opinion. I, I remember years ago, I posted a picture online of a model I had photographed and I really loved it. And some guy just ripped the crap out of me. He's like, oh, this is horrible. I can't even believe you put this online. I'd be so embarrassed. And I was like, wow, that's horrible. So I, I went to go look at his amazing work thinking I'm going to learn something from the master here. 
And the dude shoots trains at intersections in broad daylight, like at noon. And I'm like, okay, so this is obviously an opinion of somebody who, you know, still lives in their mom's basement and she's bringing him a hot pocket because he's being a badass on Facebook or something. But I wasn't learning anything from that guy because he didn't have anything to teach me. All he had was an opinion. Like sometimes I get people who say like, well, I don't like that girl's tattoos. I'm like, well, that girl has made a decision to get those tattoos and she really likes them. And this is nothing you would ever say to her face. So how rude, you know? So just be prepared that I'm not going to kind of sugarcoat my critique. I'm just going to dive right in and tell you about what I think are concerns or issues I would have. So let's start here. Uh, so one of the things about PPA image print competition, specifically anything with the Professional Photographers Association, is that an image needs to have uh, you know, this mortar, this mat, or a presentation, because this used to be a physical print competition. So these things would be physically matted and put into a frame sometimes and, and submitted that way. So you will see that this framing, this matting occurs on all PPA print competition pieces. Otherwise, it suffers points, immediately suffers points. Uh, so the thing we don't want to do with this mat, though, is we don't want to call attention to itself. So uh, this black mat here is fine. Uh, we do have a darker image, and there are some uh, shades, some darker shades uh, that do match this, which is great. We do want to be careful, though, with this stroke line. So this white stroke line might be a bit aggressive. In my mind, I would make it a bit thinner and not quite as bright white, again, this is all my opinion. If I were entering this, what would be my concerns? That would be one of my big ones right away. Uh, the other one that I'm, I'm noting, again, since we're just working on the mat here, by the way, the mat is the thing that costs people more points than anything else in image competition because they do them in such a way that makes a judge kind of go, why am I looking? Why am I have to pick the mat apart so much? The mat should just be there and move on. Don't try and make the mat something special because again, you're just gonna draw attention to it. So the fact that there's a texture up in through here is gonna draw my eye because there isn't really any down in through here. Uh, so this whole side here has no mat uh, or no texture, but just right in here. So this will become an issue where a judge will say, why is this, what's this blotchiness up in the mat that doesn't occur anywhere else? Or I see some little spots or errors. They're not gonna go, oh, I see a person apply to texture. They're looking for distracting elements. So they're not wrong. Uh, this, this, these two areas here specifically are stronger than any other area. Uh, this white stroke is a bit aggressive. So again, I knocked it down to maybe one or two pixels wide and maybe about half as bright as it is now. The idea here is that I want to see the stroke if I go looking for it, but it is not something that I want to have jump out at me and go, look, I have a stroke line around the, the image. Uh, as far as now, you're, you're not allowed to zoom in, by the way, when you're judging an image competition. But for this critique, we are going to zoom in because I think that helps a bit. So one of my major areas of concern here is if I'm retouching this image, ooh, that's a, we don't get to zoom in a little bit. We get to zoom in a lot. All right, and we're messing it up significantly. Uh, I'm not gonna even do that. Uh, right in through here, um, I don't know if I can do that. In through here, we have this, uh, the seams on the neck here, and you can kind of see them over here as well. That is one of those things that even from this distance I can see, so again, I would probably retouch those out because they're distracting elements. Like the tattoos and stuff, obviously those are him and that's fine. Uh, and you could say, well, the same here, these, these neck wrinkles are him as well. But if it's something that draws my eye, just get rid of it or, or make it so that it doesn't draw my eye. You could take the, the oomph out of these and, and knock them down a little bit that way. I like the lighting on this. So the, the lighting, when we look at lighting, um, God, I gotta find a better way to do this apparently. Uh, Bridge is not my friend. This is a loop light, meaning that the, the lighting comes down like this in a loop form, but it doesn't touch here and it doesn't touch the lip. Those are the, the big mistakes that people tend to make with lighting. So the lighting here is very good. Um, I do see a bit of an outline around him here, but I can't see that from this distance. So I don't think that that's really an, age, an area of concern. The uh, And this is going to sound kind of dumb. The biggest area of concern I have aside from the neck is actually right here. Uh, little things like this are going to draw someone's eye uh, because it's the only place where this uh, wrinkle occurs in the background. Everywhere else I see a texture, uh, which is fine, except for this wrinkle here. So uh, we're trying to aim for perfection, right? An image could be as good as the image could possibly be to score the best it can score. Uh, so something like this is just going to pull it down. Um, unfortunately. Now, overall, it's a good image. So this image would probably do well in competition. 
uh, it may merit. Merit is when it has an 80 or better, uh, which is the goal. Uh, when we get above a merit, we call those alones, although they've changed the name now to image excellence, which is kind of generic. But uh, alone is uh, when you're really, it's a very high scoring image. So just be aware that this this here shouldn't shouldn't be here uh, because it is it's just pulling the image down. It doesn't need to be there. Uh, but overall, it's a good image. I think the background is a bit bright to my taste. So if this was something that was inside your control, I think maybe I would knock this down a little bit. That would also help with any of the haloing or outlining that we see around the individual. Um, but overall, I really like it. It's a good image. Okay, so on to the next one here. So uh, we look at to the mat on this one. First place we start, again, we see a bit of texture in the mat. Uh, which is okay, uh, but again, it's something a judge may jump out at you for. Uh, the stroke line around here, we want to be careful too, the stroke doesn't disappear. Uh, so for the most part, the stroke looks pretty good. Um, it's uh, a little wide maybe, but I don't think that this is anything that, um, that I would change. Like it looks decent, uh, I'd be happy with it. Uh, so let's look, go ahead and dive into the image. The biggest things for me personally, uh, there are things that each of us get a little twitchy about. There's things that jump out to us that we kind of like, oh my God, you know, I, I didn't see that. And now that I see it, I can't unsee it. Um, each of us have those little tiny things. And one of those to me are, are halos around objects. Uh, so if we see here, there's a kind of a, a gradient of brightness that goes around here. Um, you can see that it's brighter next to the bridge in these areas. Uh, that halo is typically when someone tries to bring the sky back or restore the sky. You can see it here. There's a little bit more where it's brighter next to the edge of the bridge. Uh, this halo is one of the things that I tend to notice very quickly when I'm looking at images. So you have to be careful. If you're going to do this, you want to get in close and you want to burn down the brightness right next to the object so that I do not see this halo. Most of the time when you're using a selection like a mask, this it, it tries to be careful and not get close to this and it feathers that mask but it feathers it back too soon and you end up with a halo so i see a halo around this here um, i don't see it around the cables which is all good uh, the sky looks decent uh, this sun is obviously a very distracting element and it's also creating some some rainbow here uh, and some dif diffraction through the lens of the camera they may say well i really like this this is a nice artistic element and that's fine. It is. Um, that's really up to you and what you enjoy. Um, but we also see that the, the light here is not the light that is lighting her. You know, it's like, well, what is what is lighting her if it isn't this over here? There's some other element lighting her here. So I know this is kind of a weird thing to think about, but whenever we look at images, our brain is trying to figure out what it is that we're seeing. How is that lit? Sometimes when you see, let's say, a street light or something like that, your brain can figure out, oh, I see now that is what is lighting that. So in this situation, we don't see that element. Uh, so we have this confusion where we're looking at the image and we're not quite sure why it's uncomfortable or weird to us. Uh, but that would be the reason is the lighting doesn't have a, a base. Now, aside from that, let's just say that that's fine and, and you're good with it. What else would I fix on this image? Um, I, again, I would look for I would look for parts of the image that are just little distractions that don't need to be there, like these items here. Um, I would just simply remove those um, or mask them in because I don't really need to see them. Uh, they're not doing anything positive for me. This is really killing the image because I, my eye is drawn to it. So I look here, I look here, and then I look at her face. Uh, so this rainbow here, these other ones are probably fine, but this big one here should come out. And also this uh, black area here that is breaking through the cloud. This doesn't do anything except cause a kind of, a, we'll call these a light gap up here, which draws my eye. Uh, so these minor things here, I would remove um, and go from there. Again, watch out for the haloing around this. You can kind of see it's a little bit lighter around through here uh, next to these, next to these frames. Now, this is not to say this image isn't a great image. And I'm sure that this is a high school senior. They, they hopefully bought this because it's beautiful. Um, we do, in image competition, though, we want to do a certain level of expectations for things. Like, we don't want any true black. So, like, over here, this is a very dark. We want to bring that up a bit. So, maybe a little less shutter speed here would have helped. Yes, this would have been even brighter. Um, but, you know, we, we could have also just kind of moved to the side, knock up the sun on the shot, and then added the sun later uh, within our control. That's really up to you. Uh, there's a lot of strategies behind how to do different things like this. But this tower here, for example... 
uh, if we're trying to make the best possible image, this tower should come out uh, because it doesn't, again, tell the stories of these. The bridges and the cables and everything like that are very interesting, and I like them architecturally, but this here isn't really doing anything uh, positive for her arm, which is the, the thing it's next to. Uh, but that's that's kind of this the the gist of how this would go as far as poses go this is a great pose uh very well done and the the things that i look for in a pose first of all is the nose shadow and we don't want the nose to break the cheek line uh so we see here that her nose did not break the cheek line and uh, we do have a, a pretty aggressive white rim here we got to watch out for blown highlights on rims that happens a lot uh, when we rim lighting things and this will kill the image instantly in competition So we have to watch out for that and make sure the rim is not too bright now Obviously, it's the Sun in this kit in this case assuming that the Sun is actually there um, That's causing this rim to be pretty blown out. Um, so we just have to be careful with that uh, But the chest position to the light is great because we do get the shadow in the center So it's helping with her figure and then we don't have the back of the the hand facing the camera you're gonna see that this becomes a major issue because it's as big as the face or just about as big as the face and if it's lit as much as the face uh, then it becomes a super distracting element um, that judges love to climb on top of uh, so overall this image can be uh, brought up I think a good level by removing some of those items like again here these distracting elements fixing burning down a bit around the the edges here so they're not so bright um, and uh, maybe bringing these shadows up just a bit back here. Uh, so I think this image uh, could could merit. It's going to be a close one because it's such an aggressive light from the sun room lighting her arm. Uh, but it is behind her enough that it isn't kind of distracting or blowing out a majority of her arm. Oops, let's just click on the wrong thing again. And okay, here's the next image. And again, the first thing we go is let's look at the mat. We have kind of a double stroke kind of thing going around here, which is fine. Um, I don't know that um, that it's doing anything positive. That black stroke is a bit aggressive. Uh, but again, it's, it's subjective. As long as it's not screaming, look at the stroke line, then you're fine. Um, as far as lighting goes, uh, we have a loop light. That, so that's the little loop that is being cast on the far side. So we're on the bright or the broad side of this light. Uh, which is fine. Uh, nothing wrong with that. They typically want to see catch lights in both eyes if possible, but because her eyes are not looking at us, uh, that's fine. Uh, we don't want the nose to break the cheek line, and we see that obviously that did not happen, so we're good there. Uh, do we have some skin retouching that could have been done here? We need to make sure that judges understand that these things could be removed or um, at least minimized. Oops, what the hell am I doing there? Um, so you can tell it's a new tool for writing on the screen, huh? because i'm really good at it <laughs> oh, we we do want to if i can see the skin marks from here they need to be resolved um so obviously i'm not supposed to zoom if i'm judging print competition wise um, we have to be careful with anything that's blown out or anything that is perceived to be blown out so if it's something is too bright and a judge could go hmm is that blown out a judge is going to assume it's blown out. It's just one of those stupid things that happens is the judge is going to go, well, it looks blown out, therefore it must be blown out. Uh, so I would bring these back a little bit, uh, again, in raw before I begin my, my image um, retouching uh, because when you're lowering the exposure in raw, you get a much more accurate uh, job of it than if you're doing it later. Um, this is obviously a lot brighter than her face. Uh, obviously, it's a white wing. But I will tell you that that will hurt this image because the, the eye is drawn to, first of all, the thing that is of high, highest contrast and the brightest, and then it's drawn to faces. So if the face is the brightest and the highest contrast and it's a face, you win. You know where the eye is going to go. In this situation, though, your eye is torn because you have something that's very bright over here, lots of contrast down in here, and then the face here. Um, so you've got this argument. So your eye doesn't really know where it's supposed to go. It probably goes here first or into here first. Uh, so that's going to cause a judge to kind of freak out a bit on you. Uh, the other thing that I find is when I've entered, and this is again personal, well, this is still personal experience. When I enter black and white imagery and I tone it, it always gets hammered. It always gets hammered. They They don't like their black and white images toned. They want them pure black and white. And when you're entering image competitions for black and white, uh, depending on the system you're using, they'll actually have a checkbox to say this is a true black and white. Meaning if somebody 
one of these judges has a terrible monitor and they say, mm, I see some magenta or other colors kind of leaking into this. They know that that image is supposed to be black and white and their monitor sucks um, because we, obviously everybody's got a little bit different monitor. When this was all controlled and we did it all in the same room, it was different because the judges were given equipment that represented these images well. But during the whole COVID situation where judges are judging from home in some situations, uh, you don't know what kind of kind of potato uh, monitor the judge might own. I assume that most of them own good monitors because obviously they're doing this for a living, uh, but you know, to each their own. Uh, the rest of the image here, um, this area here uh, for the, her pose may have been done a bit differently or again, just kind of tuck this in here so that it doesn't draw my eye and make me feel that the pose um, could have been more flattering for her, her figure. Um, this happens a lot to me when I'm posing women and they bring in lingerie that's too tight. Uh, this, I will oftentimes, instead of pushing this part in, I will actually bring this part out. It doesn't matter as long as I see that there, you know, there's a figure here. I want to see the figure and it doesn't have to be like a, you know, hourglass figure or something goofy like that. I just want to make sure that I don't show that there's a lingerie issue in through here. So I could actually pull this part out or just even it. Um, it either one, either one works. If you want to pull this one in, that's fine too. Um, whichever one you think more represents the, the goal of the image. Remember that uh, depending on how you do this, you can give someone a real psychosis. I'm not saying, oh my God, the photographer, he hates that mole too. Well, no, it's because you removed it because you were being too aggressive with your retouching and not thinking about, well, if that's going to be gone in two weeks, if it's not going to be gone in two weeks, maybe, you know, maybe she loves it and that's on her face or maybe she's self-conscious about it. And then you remove it. And now all of a sudden she's like, oh my God, he hates it too. Or in this case, he, oh my God, he thinks I'm fat too. So be careful not to go and tuck just indiscriminately uh, taking weight off people. That is not what they look like. Uh, so be careful with that. Um, this image here, um, I like it, but I don't think it's going to do well in competition. And one of the things that uh, I, I kind of say uh, to myself too, because I obviously encounter this every day, is images have a ceiling of wow factor. We call that impact. And there are 12 elements that we, that PPA uses for figuring out um, you know, how important an image is and how correct an image is and all these other things. And the big one or the trunk of the tree to me is impact. And do you go, wow, when this image pops up, you know, do you, do you go, it just took my breath away. You know, maybe cry, make a judge laugh or cry. You're going to win. Um, this image doesn't have a huge amount of impact. Cause yes, it's a beautiful girl. It's well knit. It's a nice pose. It's you know nicely styled, but it doesn't have a, the wow factor, the impact and the impact, even if it was the best lit, best retouched image ever, if it doesn't have the impact, it may not merit. Uh, so just realize that some images, they just have a ceiling, but it doesn't mean that this, this lady didn't buy this picture. Again, that's a green merit. It means that image competition wise, it just doesn't maybe have the wow factor that's going to be needed. And I think that wow factor is um, one of the reasons that I do well at image competition is because I'm so critical of all my imagery to look for the very few that actually look like they have enough wow factor to work. And I rarely find that with client work uh, because my clients will buy, like I to say, this, this young lady here, if this was for sale for her, she probably bought it because it's a beautiful image. Uh, but in image competition, I can't seem to get client imagery that has a wow factor to me. So I don't enter my own client imagery. I shoot specifically for competitions uh, quite often. Now, that isn't the case 100% of the time, but um, I find that that does, does help. All right, let's go on to the next one. Okay, so one of the, again, that those, those things we look for, I see a halo kind of around this building here. Got to be careful of that. Um, let me show you this cute trick here. Let's do, um, let's open this in Photoshop. And I want to show you, we talk about solar curves from time to time on here, and it's been a while since I mentioned one. I actually have a couple of videos specifically on that, uh, but I want to show you how I can spot this kind of thing because I do this on all of my images before I enter in competition. So I'm just going to add a curve to this. And I have as a preset uh, because I use it so often. It's called a solar. And what this, you can see the curve is just a crazy up and down, up and down. But do you see the glow around this building, right? The, the, the building is a glow around it. And that glow is what I'm seeing when I'm just looking at it like this. I see that glow. It's one of those things that I'm hypersensitive to. 
Uh, so as a competition judge, I look for this right away. Every time it just jumps right out to me and I don't need the solar curve to see it, but I do need the solar curve to fix it. So when I'm trying to fix something, for example, I'll take a curve like this, knock it down substantially, invert it, and I'll just work like this. I'll use a brush, the really low flow, and I'll go and just kind of knock all this, this glow down while I'm using this curve to kind of see what's going on so that I can see, okay, that doesn't look like it's glowing as much anymore. Obviously I'm doing this super fast and I'm not using my Wacom tablet, but um, the idea here is to just kind of knock that glow down so I don't see it. So now if I turn this curve off, I don't see the glow anymore. Now do you see what I'm seeing? So this is something that I look for when I'm judging. This, this glow jumps right out to me and I really can't tell you why that is, but my brain's wired to see it. But as you can see, it's pretty easy to fix. You just have to take some time and burn it down that way. Um, let's go back here. Where am I? I want to uh, bridge. There we go. The other thing uh, that we have to be careful of is that verticals are always vertical and um, horizontal. You know, the word horizon has the word horizontal in it, right? Uh, and we see here this line is not vertical with this. There's a difference. And then here's a little bit off as well. Uh, we have to be really careful with that. So the keystoning of this image needs to be fixed a bit. It needs to be rotated slightly this way. And then the keystoning means that the, the top end of this image needs to be stretched a little bit horizontally. That will make these true vertical because this this is something it's going to kill it. it this is a, a a deal breaker that will kill the image immediately for image competition because this isn't truly vertical and if you look at it you can see this crooked one of these things i tend to do is my knee-jerk reaction to an image is almost always correct there's something that i'm seeing and i like i don't dismiss it i go okay why did i stop and look at this specific thing. What was the what was the thing? So my knee-jerk reaction is it's crooked, okay? And then I gotta go back and go, why did my brain knee-jerk react to that? And then figure it out. Uh, oftentimes it'd be like, oh, that's too bright or oh, that's too dark or, or something is uncomfortable to me. I've learned to listen to that little hint that my voice is, my inside voice is giving me. And immediately when this pops up, I go, it's crooked. Now, is it crooked? Mm, yes, it looks like it is a little crooked. So it's just a matter of figuring that out. Uh, these buildings are also pretty dark compared to the background. So I, I think this entire scene could deal with a bit of additional lighting. But again, her face is really the brightest thing in the up and the brightest scene in the scene. Um, maybe a little bit, again, lower shutter speed to bring the buildings up a bit. But this again is personal preference. The maker may say, I like a darker background because I also like a darker background. So I can't really pick that apart. Uh, let's look at the lighting on her. So first of all, her pose, again, another really good pose. We're not seeing the back of a hand so much, but if they are, they tend to be lower and out of the frame a bit. Um, the finger position, this, this hand is fantastically done. Um, you know, this is really well done. This one here is a little bit odder uh, because we actually see the four fingers being splayed across the, the dress. Again, not a big deal, but um, it is something a judge might look at, but they're not really going to murder you for this because it is somewhat minor. Uh, the lighting on the face is somewhat flat, meaning we, we see her nose shadow, a slight shadow, but we really don't get any more three dimensionality out of her face. Uh, but again, it's not a, not a problem. It's, it's just something to be aware of. A judge is going to say, while that lighting could have been a little bit more, had a more dimensionality to it, which is fine. We can see all the detail in the dress. And uh, then we get to, into some problems here where I'm having trouble seeing where her boot ends and the wall starts or stops. This is called figure to ground. This side is decent though. It's here and here. Uh, so we need to make sure that we have separation between these objects, between the wall and the, and the boot. And then we've lost all the detail in through here. We need to see something uh, anywhere there's a shadow. And again, if we're in Photoshop, uh, did I close Photoshop? I did not. If we're in Photoshop and we need to fix this, one of my favorite ways to do it is just take a curve and just lift the end of it off a little bit like this. Just lifting the bottom end of this curve brings it so that there's no true black anywhere in the image. So now if we look in here, we can see that there, there are some details in through here. Uh, and it may actually help with the separation of the boot from the background a bit. A, bit. a minor thing, but this... This little bit of curve here, I think even helped um, some of my issues with the brightness of the buildings. So we turn this on and off. Um, yeah, again, it's subjective, but this is something that I do to almost all of 
all of my images because it isn't overexposing the image. It's only raising the shadow side of it. And you don't want to do it too aggressively. Um, you know, there's all kinds of goofiness you can do in through here, but um, I, something like this is something that's just my personal preference and something that I would use. Okay. Let's, oh, let's go to the next image. Okay, here we go, a little bit closer. Uh, so more dimensionality on the face this time with the light. I really like that. Again, we got to watch for the uh, the straightness of the building. And there was no mat around that last image or this image. I think that he's, uh, the person who submitted these is just kind of given to me for critique in general and not for image competition. But if this was for image competition, we do need a frame around it. Um, but we need to watch that vertical. That vertical should always be there. Um, I would also probably remove this building just because it's bright and it's against the edge. And I would just copy this building um, down, you know, and continue this one across. It's a minor little thing, but it's it's a different color than everything else in the scene. And it's near the edge of the image that draws the eye. Anything bright touching the edge of the image is going to draw your eye. So the goal is to kind of minimize that if possible. Um, the lighting here, we got to be careful that the shoulder is blown out a bit because of the sun. Um, the light on the face is interesting. It's a split light, uh, meaning that we're only lighting obviously half her face. Uh, my, my biggest concern is I can see her teeth a little bit in here. Uh, and from this distance, uh, from where we're back here, I can't really tell what kind of facial expression that is. Is she happy? Is she sad or whatever? This is one of those things that judges are going to jump on and go, I don't know what this is. So where you cheat with that is you use the title of the image to get the point across. So is there a title that we can give it to kind of sets her facial expression, gives it a reason for being the expression she's making it. Um, that's one of those things that, that do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this, this image would, would probably it may merit. It may not merit. It's one of those. Um, it, it probably isn't going to merit because the expression um, more than anything. Hand position's decent on this side. Uh, however, this time we're showing, again, we're showing the back of the hand here. Uh, but it's not, again, horrible because it's well lit. It's down farther in the scene and it's not as big as her face. Uh, so I, I think this hand position is actually pretty decent. Um, I wouldn't complain about that. I can see shadow detail in the black dress. So very well done there. I uh, just got to be careful with it in up through it, in through here to make sure we have a little bit of shadow detail there as well. Again, using that little curve trick uh, that I showed here in Photoshop, but it's taking the end, the black point, and moving it up just a little bit is enough that you could probably do that. And if you needed to, you could just obviously mask that out so it's only being used in specific areas of the image. But be careful with that. Um, when I do that, I tend to do it with a very big brush. Like I do something like this, where I'm gonna say, this is, this is what the mask looks like. I don't want to make the mask small and try and go in here and sketch with it because then I'm going to end up with all this goofy, you know, kind of little swirlies and stuff. Then judges are going to pick up on that kind of crap. So you should use a big gradient and keep it simple. Um, but that type of thing can be used to restore some of the shadow down in here. So something like that. Uh, I think that's kind of the same thing I would do on that image here. But uh, the other thing about this one is the framing. So she's centered, but yet she's looking this to, this way. So whenever a person is framed in this way, you don't want to center them. She would be looking into the wider space. So the edge of the image would probably be somewhere here. And we wouldn't want to include this area of the sky. So we'd have to cut it probably in here. Uh, so we would change the framing of the image like this so that she's pushed off center. She wants to be uh, off the side because she's looking the other way. There's balance in the way they're looking. So she wouldn't be centered if she's looking this way. If she's looking straight at the camera, then you could actually probably play that card. But in this situation, you're gonna they're gonna jump on you for it because she shouldn't be centered. Now, someone's gonna say something like the rule of thirds would be better here. And I think the rule of thirds is stupid. It's the rule of the golden ratio, right? Or phi, P-H-I, but it's almost a third. So this whole rule of third things developed from laziness amongst the people saying, well, it's just a rule of thirds. It's not a rule of thirds. It's a rule of almost a third. Um, so again, because she's facing this way, I would move her the other direction slightly. She doesn't have to be swished all the way to the side, but I would definitely feature more of this side of her vision. Okay, let's move on to the next one here. So lighting position on this is great. Again, we're seeing a butterfly. This is a butterfly um, 
It goes directly, the shadow is directly down under the nose here, a paramount or butterfly. I don't know why they call it a butterfly. It doesn't look like a butterfly to me. It never has, but hey, that's just me. Uh, but good light there. And we have catch lights in both eyes. Um, it's a harsh light, which is kind of like a beauty, um, your your 1950s kind of you know, lighting in there, movie star lighting, uh, which is fine. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Uh, we do need to be careful with, again, skin retouching. There's some things that jump out. Uh, maybe not this mark here, but um, this one here, this one here. Um, and then just be careful with some modeling that they're going to look for. And then in here as well. Uh, just remove any any little distracting elements like that. But I would leave any other skin things alone, you know, little moles and stuff, but just make sure that this treatment the face receives is the treatment the rest of the delicotage here receives. Uh, we also have a, a uh, disparity in the tonality of her makeup on her face and the makeup on the chest. Um, usually when I'm working with a makeup artist, um, I jump on them for that and they know better. They're like very careful about making sure these two match. Um, if not, uh, there's actually a video on my channel there for, it's got a picture of Jennifer with a bunch of butterflies on how to fix um, different image disparity or color disparities in images. Um, the biggest downside with this one is actually the amount of flyaway hair. Um, they're going to just jump all over this. And unfortunately, the amount of effort required to fix all of this is insurmountable. I mean, you could spend hours working on this. Um, and then by the time you're done, is this image really impactful enough that someone would go, wow, you know, it, I, I remember live judging once we're sitting around and um there were an audience of maybe 30 or 40 people behind us and there were there's like five or six judges in the room and an image would come up and you'd hear the collective <sighs> the big gasp from everybody behind me and you're like oh, okay so the impact was there so if this comes up it's a decent headshot it's a very decent headshot but i don't think that it has the impact that a judges would be looking for and again the flyaway hair is going to be the thing that would cause me to not put it in if it were mine. But overall, I really like it. I mean, it's a beautiful image, a beautiful woman, and it's well lit. Uh, there's not really much to pick apart from that standpoint. She's going to love it. But for competition-wise, it's it's a bit it's uh, going to be a bit brutalized by the judges, I fear. All right. Oh, here's a wider angle version of the same one. I actually like this one a lot better. Um, I want to see a little bit more of the arm, so I'm okay with this. Usually we say that we don't want to see elbows and shots. We want the, the frame to be more here. Um, you could probably do that and it would not suffer so much. Um, but I think you could probably get away with not having to worry about that. Um, because the background is bigger now, these flyaway hairs are not as large. Um, they're not as, you know, taking up as much of the resolution of my screen as they were before. But I would fix some of the bigger ones like in through here that's not what I meant to do. I meant to do this. And through here, just these ones that kind of draw my eye are the ones that I would probably fix. Um, but otherwise, I think leaving some of this hair in here is obviously it's natural and that's not going to be a problem. Um, so again, same thing with the skin retouching and so on. The face is also, again, a little bit bright compared to everything else, but uh, that's not really going to cause you, I think, a huge amount of concern. Um, but also make sure that, um, well, these things are mostly vertical, but it looks like a little bit of rotation this way of like one or two degrees would kind of make more of them vertical. Um, but I don't think that's something that a judge is going to really jump on. Plus, you could always just use liquefy to, to nudge these around a bit if you wanted to. Oops. Okay. And uh, so that was that was it. So that was my two cents on <laughs> in these images. Agree or disagree with me. Um, that's, that's obviously what you guys can do. Uh, but when I enter a competition, these are the same level of critique I give to myself. So I said, it's, it's brutal and you know, apologize for if you're like, wow, that was really mean. That guy, that guy didn't, didn't uh, pull any punches or whatever. The thing is that uh, I am a firm believer of no one gets better through praise. You know, I could tell you you're an amazing photographer all day long and tell you that you're so good and then you don't do well in competition. And I just continue to tell you that you're an amazing photographer. That doesn't help you at all. Um, I think you need to hear what is holding your imagery back so that you can be better at it. Uh, for this for this competition, for example, I think this image here, this one with the basketball player, I would totally enter this one, uh, making a few changes that I, I recommended there. I really love that one. And I think this one here also has a lot of potential. Um, these two images, I think, are the strongest that are in here. Uh, the others may or may not merit, but I feel pretty confident this one's going to merit uh, easily. 
Um, this this one here is again it's got some things with the haloing of the buildings and and the verticality that may or may not um, make or break the image. But this image by far is my favorite. Um, even here, if I were judging, this image is going to be one of those that's going to go very well, um, I think. And it's black and white without a, a tone set to it like this one. Again, judges tend not to like that. Um, I don't know why, but time and time again, I've seen it over the years that they just tend to pee all over these black and whites that have a uh, some sort of a, a split tone to them. They don't like them. And I do like this image, um, the wider version of this one. I think I like this a little bit better. Um, it's I'm fine that it's centered because she is looking straight at me, although her nose is pointed this way. So I could see losing a little bit of the left again to shove her slightly off center. Uh, but overall, I think the tones of this image are really nice and playful. Uh, will it merit? I'm not sure. Um, it, it doesn't have a lot of impact, but it's a beautiful portrait. Uh, so sometimes beautiful portrait is enough. Again, it really depends on the title. Um, some people get really flowery with the titles, and I don't think that does them any favors. I use the title as a cheat sheet to tell the judges a secret message like, you know, hey, I, this is the situation I faced in this image, and I just wanted to let you know that. Uh, instead of calling it something like, you know, she's all that in a bag of chips. Okay, well, that's a fun title, but um, it doesn't really give any information to the judges to help them. Uh, this image here, for example, coming up with a title as to why she is where she is, um, is is a fun one. You know, there's there's a lot to be done here that could really kind of make this next level with the title. Uh, what that title could be, I really don't have any clue. <laughs> but it's one of those things that that titling is a is a big deal, um, and I think people blow it off to match. I've even seen portraits where they just call it Portrait One, and they don't even bother to give it a um, a title, which is a shame. Uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely enter this one, and I think this would be my next favorite. Um, just personally, um, the lighting is really solid. The styling is really nice. Um, I like the wider feeling. This one just feels a bit too, again, my knee-jerk reaction is it feels too cramped. So it's going to feel too cramped. Um, and then this one here, I, we may or may not have to lose the elbow. Uh, but I think we'd be okay losing it um, because we're not cutting off the the, the uh, lower part of the cleavage, which is obviously would look weird if we did that. But overall, there you go. So if you thought this was helpful and you are a member of this channel, send me some images. As I said, it's not the friendliest critique you ever get because, again, I don't believe you get better because someone's telling you you're awesome. You get better when someone rips it apart. And I have people that I send my images to and they rip it apart. And I'm okay with that. Um, I'm not going to get better um, if they're just telling me how awesome I am. I need them to lay out the, hey, here's where you need to improve or here's what you should have done differently. Uh, it's not to say that, you know, you can go back and shoot that same girl in that same location and do it right the second time. It's that, well, I've learned this lesson. So the next time I go and I'm in a similar situation, I know what I can do. Um, so it's, it's more or less a post-production fix at this point. But thanks for coming to me on this fine Tuesday morning. I hope everybody found this useful. I would like to do more of these. Um, I do them privately quite often, and I've decided to kind of start maybe putting them out there with the permission of obviously the photographers to see if they'll allow the, the world to see what we're is that, that they're creating. Um, and then hopefully you'll see some of these come up in competition. I would love to see uh, what you come up with and how they do. Uh, so that's one of those things that, that uh, makes me happy is to see that the, the uh, criticism and the help actually mattered. You know, that's, that's the reason that we're, we're here, right? Everybody, that's all I've got for today. If you liked this, please take a moment to click the like button and subscribe if you want to see more. And I uh, say leave your comments below and I will catch you all next time. Thank you very much for sending the images in and I hope this was helpful. I'd love to see uh, what you come up with as far as changes as well. So if you want to throw these off to me again later and say these are the, the more perfected versions, I would love to see that as well. All right, everybody, take care. 